Welcome everyone to part one of motorcycle modding in Photoshop. I'm doing this video especially for my friends at Suzuki800.com. If you have an intruder, that is a really cool place to be. That's a fantastic forum, great people. I highly recommend it. I'm having a blast over there. Um, in this part, what I would like to cover is the basics of prepping your bike to do a custom paint job on it and the first step that you all have to do is to mask the areas that you'll be working on and of course in our on our example we'll probably focus on the rear and front fenders and the tank and possibly maybe this plastic as well that depends on your taste and what you want to do with it um, it doesn't really do anything for our purposes but I always recommend to make a duplicate of the of the image, put it on a separate layer. You can do that either by pressing Ctrl J or just right clicking your your image in the layers and choosing duplicate layer. Okay that there's a duplicate. Just in case you mess something up you can you always have the second copy to revert back to. Right, I, the technique I'll be using to actually mask out a tank will let's start with a tank. It's called quick mask. I think quick mask is really user friendly. It's a quick way to actually draw your selections instead of using any of the selection tools in here, uh, which are quite dodgy and they don't really do much for us since we have to follow the edge. You could use paths, but I think paths are, are much slower. Uh, maybe I'll if if anyone requests it, I'll show it in the other video how to do the same selections with you by using paths. For our purposes we will use quick mask. You activate quick mask by pressing Q on your keyboard and you'll notice in here when you do press it the quick mask label will show. You can switch it on and off no problem. And well, Let's switch it on then and we will be using a standard brush and uh, we will be actually drawing a red area that's our mask and the red area is the area that will not be part of the selection while everything else will be. Uh, it's sort of doing it in reverse but it doesn't really matter because you can reverse your selections when you, once you're done. Uh, the thing to remember with your brush settings you sh to start with you can pick fairly large size and you don't have to worry about hardness too much however I do recommend it to keep it always at around 90%. 100% is too much, 100% does a, a, an edge that's uh, that's really, uh, I think it's way too harsh. Oh, I can't see anything there. There we go. So that's a really sharp edge. This one is a much softer one. So I think for for something like my, uh, selecting a part of the motorcycle, the 90% or 85 will do just fine. It will provide us with a nice and smooth uh, edge to to it. Uh, so I'll just start by filling out the inside of a tank. You don't have to really pay too much care to while doing that, as long as you don't uh, go over the lines. Really, um, I'm not using my mouse. I'm using my uh, my tablet. I use um, uh, Intuos three. A4 tablet, which is very cool, very cool tool. If you can, uh, you can if you can buy it, although 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 that quick masking can be done with a with a mouse as well, it's just going to be a bit slower. Right, so we have the uh, inside of a tank filled out. Now we need to do the edges. I do recommend choosing a, a much smaller size for the edges, simply because of the fact that in most cases on most computers, the bigger the the brush size the more laggy it is so it doesn't actually it doesn't draw it's not as smooth when you draw it which it's a really a nuisance when you try to do something uh, uh, where you care for the um, for the quality of the line so I go with a fairly fairly sized brush I just draw along the line of the uh, of a tank Don't have to worry about too much about the um, about the line because, to be fair, we will actually reduce the resolution of that file 
at the end. And you can't really spot those areas like here that I left some. It's just to have the general shape. There we go, almost done. That looks like it. Right, so now that we have our quick mask drawn, we will switch it off by pressing Q again, and you'll notice that we have a selection path where we had our red area. And I've just noticed I, I left too much in here, so I can press Q again and just add some more, just to fill it up a little bit more to that line. That'll do. Q again, switching it off. And as I mentioned before, the red area is actually the area that's excluded and you can easily check it by zooming out and you'll see that the selection goes all the way around the, the image. So it's basically everything in here excluding this area. But what we want a tank, so what you need to press is Control shift and I to invert. And now the, this disappeared and you can see only the tank is selected. If you're not sure, the easiest way to check it is just press, make a copy of the, your selection. So you press Control C and Control V, and you'll notice that you have a new layer. And uh, if you switch off the other ones, you'll end up just with your tank, which is a bit crap on the selection in here, but that doesn't matter. It will all blend in the end. Uh, so that's it. That's how you mask and select parts of your bike. You can move that about. That's your working path. We will not really be doing much with the uh, with the actual object. We will just use it to select it once we uh, do the masking on the rear fender and we do the masking on the front fender. We will actually combine those selections to have one and then on that single one we will actually be applying our uh, our um, our custom paint job, but that will be in a part two. So get cracking, do your masks, select out those um, those areas where you want to work on, and we will carry on in part two. Cheers, guys.